Welcome back once again. So moving forward, super excited. We're going to talk about in this lesson about cost management. So you as a project manager need to understand how to control costs that you are incurring internally or maybe externally, running around meetings, talking to clients, and so forth. So not only those, the actual project costs as well. So I'm going to talk about how to control, how to plan, how to estimate, determine, and then, of course, control those costs. You may have instances where clients would have change orders. So you're working on a project for your client, and all of a sudden they say, well, we want some additional software being developed, or we want a third-party application being integrated with the existing software that you as a project manager are managing. So you need to ensure how to handle those change orders or change controls. In this lesson, I'm going to move forward and talk about those. And let's take a look at, jump right in, about the details of scheduling cost management. Welcome back. Super excited. Moving into Chapter 7. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about the project cost management. So I'm going to cover the main concept that project managers need to understand regarding cost management. However, there are certain formulas that is if you are interested in your PMP exam, for example, I will also highlight different formulas towards the end of the lesson, but I'm not going to explain all of these uh, formulas. So that's something that I will assign that to you as a homework, you can say, or you can study on your own because this is something that you have to practice with all these formulas. So I will provide several resources as well as talk about the important formulas at the end but it's something that i will leave that to you and i've also explained that in the beginning of this course that i'm not gonna and this course is not all about just passing the exam by the way it's practical project management right so you need to understand how a project manager in the real world would face any of these challenges so let's jump right in moving into cost management Here's the overview. So the cost management from a project manager's perspective includes the processes that are involved starting from planning all the way to controlling costs, right? So that includes estimating, budgeting, finances, funding, managing, and controlling so that you can take your project and complete it within the approved budget. And this is by far the most challenging aspect because costs can very easily go out of control. In my experience, when you work on projects, uh, sometimes you don't have control over the costs. There are certain instances where there's nothing you can do. For example, one of the employees just quit on you, right? So one of the lead developers, and now you have to hire an external resource, but you cannot go through the entire process of HR, right? Hiring that employee because that may take weeks or months. And here you are as a project manager, you need to make a decision. So that cost go up if you hire an external resource immediately, right? So that's, you know, a real world example that I just gave. So the project cost management processes, once again, are planning the cost management, which is the process of defining how the project costs will be estimated, budgeted, managed, monitored, and controlled. So as a good project manager, you always would like to have some kind of extra budget, right, or contingency planning, I should say, within the cost management as well. Second is the estimated costs, which is the process of developing an approximation of monetary resources needed to complete project work. Next is determining the budget itself, which is the process of aggregating the estimated costs of individual activities or work packages to establish an authorized cost baseline. And then finally, the controlling of these costs, which is the process of monitoring the status. Here's the overview from the PIMBOK 6 guide. So 7.1, 2, 3, and then 7.4, which are the four aspects of project cost management, which are presented as discrete processes, right, with defined interfaces, while in practice they overlap. So once again, this chart may be a little smaller, but refer to the resource guide that I provided, the sixth guide, as a downloadable resource, and just kind of go through it. And I would assign that as a homework to you. So go through all of these areas, and if you have any questions, post them in the discussion area. But overall, understand conceptually that these areas are part of the cost control. 
But on some projects, especially those are smaller scopes, you may not incur all of these phases, right? The cost budget is more tightly coupled and linked and can be viewed as a single process. So these are, again, guidelines provided by the Project Management Institute. As a project manager, you ought to know these, right? So as you dive into projects, of course, you start off with a smaller project. I don't think any enterprise company is going to assign you a complex project, especially if you're starting as project managers. So you always start with small projects and then you build on these concepts. Here are the key concepts that I want to cover regarding cost management. It's primarily concerned with the cost of the resources needed to complete project activities. So, for example, if you need to hire someone, at what pay rate you hire vendors, what is the cheapest vendor you can find to do the job, and so forth. If you need to hire an extra space, for example, for an office, you need to consider all of the uh, factors that relate to those costs. So, project cost management should consider the effect of project decisions on the recurring or subsequent recurring cost of using maintaining and then supporting whatever it is that you're actually working on as a project, whether it's service or product. So for example, a limited number of design reviews can reduce the cost of project, but at the same time could increase the resulting product's operating costs. So different stakeholders measure project costs in different ways, and you as a project manager need to understand the level of these stakeholders and the expectations. Another example, is the cost of an acquired item may be measured when the acquisition decision is made or committed. The order is placed, the item is delivered, or the actual cost is incurred or recorded for project accounting purposes. So again, these are some of the areas that you need to understand as a project manager. A real life uh, live example that I can give you from my experience is, uh, for instance, the customer has ordered a software product that you or your organization needs to implement for the customer, right? Now, they've already signed off on the approvals and you've already obtained all the approvals for purchasing the software or you have the, the, the PO as well from the customer purchase order. But the third-party software that you wish to purchase for your customer is on sale, for example, right? Or the licenses are 20% off for another week or so. So you have to make a decision whether you purchase now and obtain the benefit of those 20% or wait. And then, of course, when the time comes of implementation of the software, which may be a couple of months down the road, purchase then. But at that point in time, you are not going to get the 20% discount offer. So those are, again, the decisions that you, and you as a project manager, and of course, um, including your stakeholders, you need to make and then move forward with that. So planning cost management is one of the first phase. I'm just going to skim through it. You can take a look at all these uh, detailed phases, but it's simply the process of defining how the project costs will be estimated, budgeted, managed, monitored, and controlled. So the inputs, tools, and techniques, and the outputs, right? Again, we follow the same methodology as we have been in the previous lectures. Second is the estimate cost, same input, tools, and output. So in order to estimate cost, which is again the process of developing an approximation of the costs of resources needed to complete the project. And the key benefit of this process is that it determines the monetary resources that are required for the project. So for instance, inputs include, of course, your project management plan, your cost management plan, your documents, other environmental factors. The tools in estimating costs could be an expert judgment. In other words, you want to hire some external cost accountant if you don't have the in-house expertise to do the cost estimation for you. Or you can do some parametric tests like statistical tests you can run if you have the skills and abilities within the organization. You can do a three-point bottom-up and do other data analysis. So again, this is something that you need to evaluate as the company itself, whether the company that you are working as a project manager for has all of these expertise or not. And if you do, of course, use them. And then you'll get the outputs as well. 
Third is the determined budget, which is, again, the process of aggregating the estimated costs of individual activities. So now you're breaking down costs based on individual tasks. For example, software installation, that's a task. What's it going to cost? Next, you have how many people you will wish to have on this particular task. Well, what is that going to cost? And so on. The project budget components, cost estimates for the different activities or tasks or subtasks, along with any contingency reserves for these activities. Typically, in the real world, we do about, I'd say about 20 to 30 percent contingency planning, okay? So your cost would include an additional 30 percent for your project or for these activities or tasks or subtasks. So the work package cost estimates along with any contingency reserves for these are aggregated into control accounts. So you have the total amount, as you can see in the chart here, the project budget. Then from that project budget, you have a management reserve chunk. You have the cost baseline created. You have the control accounts. From the control accounts amount, you have the contingency reserve and then the actual task costs and so on. So this way, as a project manager, you can kind of take a look at the total budget and then kind of divide it and then allocate accordingly. Here are the budget components. Since the cost estimates that make up the baseline that you've created earlier are directly tied to all of these tasks and subtasks and activities, this enables a time-phased view of the baseline, which is typically like an S-curve, right? So it looks like an S-curve. So the cost based on expenditures and funding requirements are listed in this graph. The cumulative value is on the y-axis or vertical, and then on the x-axis you have the time, right? So as time progresses, your funding requirements increase, right, based on the total budget. So just kind of take a look at this concept of the project budget components. So each component you can break down and then lay it out on a graph. Finally, the controlling costs, which again, you as a project manager, you can also hire external individuals or from within the organization, you can do different data analysis such as earned value analysis, variance analysis, trend analysis, and these are all statistical techniques that you can use to control the costs. So if you're interested in, again, like I mentioned in the beginning of this lesson, interested in the project PMP certification, then there are formulas that you would have to understand and calculate as a project manager all of these areas within cost estimation, right? In terms of controlling costs, scheduling costs, allocating costs, estimating costs, and so on. So the project cost control includes the factors that create changes to the authorized cost baseline ensuring that all the change requests are acted in a timely manner. And again, these are just the guidelines as a project manager, you need to keep that in mind, right? So as you gain more experience in projects, you would actually be doing all of these. You'd be managing the actual change when and as they occur, ensuring the cost do not exceed the authorized funding or by a work big breakdown structure component. And a good example is, for example, the dev team has given you a work breakdown structure. In other words, the, the lead developer has told you that, hey, it's going to take five hours to install Office 365 or SharePoint on the server. Well, it actually ends up taking the team eight hours, right? So that way you need to ensure that the costs do not exceed the funding. So you need to let the, the lead developer know that, hey, we only have five hours to do this, right? Similarly, monitoring cost performance to isolate and understand the variances or the variability of these costs from the approved cost baseline. Monitoring work performance against funds expected or expended, rather. Well, this is something important because as project manager, you sometimes get too much tied into the actual tasks and the completion of tasks and meeting the deadlines. You kind of shy away from these cost control methodology, right? So kind of work side by side and break down each of these tasks that and the costs that you've associated with it 
uh, just kind of monitor them very closely. So the cost control also includes preventing unapproved changes from being included in the costs, informing stakeholders of all approved changes and associated costs, bringing expected cost overruns within acceptable limits. So towards this part, you need to kind of make sure that your stakeholders, your boss, or senior management are also in the loop of with all these costs that are, are being incurred and managed and controlled by you as a project manager. Perfect. So quick recap, we talked about the cost management within a project. Of course, we didn't highlight all the formulas. So next, before I end this lesson, let me give you a flavor of some of the common formulas. I will also provide several downloadable resources and I would like you to practice with all of these single formulas. And if you don't understand any of these, of course, post them in the discussion area. I will be glad to help. But since that's not part of the course, my focus is not too much on the certification itself, but actually giving you the skills and abilities to become a practical project manager. And by the way, the certification for the certification, you need to wait you know, a couple of years before you get the experience, before you can actually appear for the exam, by the way. So if you're just a beginner and starting off as a project manager, you would have to go through and get the experience anyways, right? So this is a perfect course for you in that respect. So let's switch to a Word document that I have to show you all the formulas. Here we go. These are the common cost management knowledge areas or the PMP formulas. There are about more than 25 formulas, so to speak, on average. But I've listed the, the top eight common formulas that you need to know for sure. And then the rest of them you can kind of take a look at and, and use them and learn them as well. I will provide you uh, several links and sites that, I, that kind of talk about all these formulas. And there's several other resources that you can take a look at as well. So the top eight ones are cost variance, schedule variance, cost performance index, schedule performance index, the EAC. So these are the areas that you need to take a look at and work with. Once you have mastered these common formulas, then you can, of course, take a look at the rest of them. So I will provide you with this document. You can take a look at this and just kind of go through all of these formulas and understand what the earned value cost is and so on. And at the bottom, I'll also provide several other useful sites which lists additional formulas that you can practice at your own will. Okay, so this is a good way. So in this lesson, I just wanted to cover the main concept of project cost management from a practical project manager's perspective and some of the important formulas as well. So post any questions in the discussion area. I'll be glad to explain a specific formula, for example, how that works. And then let's move to the next lesson.